at one point, the number 7-Eleven used to only represent this local convenience store. But that all changed in May of 2022 when it represented the ratio of Muslims to Islamophobes who protested our on-campus prayer at, at Cerritos High School. It was during uh, our first meeting in our advisor's room at lunch, and it left us completely off guard and completely vulnerable to be utterly disrespected and mocked during our time of prayer. Juma prayer is the time of the week where Muslims gather in congregation to listen to a sermon and to fulfill one of five daily obligatory prayers. During this time, we're not allowed to talk to others or leave our concentration unless it is a life or death matter. But that was made difficult when 11 protesters entered the room with, with offensive gestures and mocking tones, creating a hostile environment when Muslim students at my school were simply trying to express our religious identity. The terms terrorist, raghead, and camel jockey bring that same uncomfortable experience by sending a shiver down my spine. Believe it or not, my experience with, uh, with Islamophobia didn't start when 11 protesters disrupted my group of seven, but rather when I told someone I was Muslim and they responded with that I was going to hell in the third grade, or the first time I was called a terrorist in fifth grade, or in sixth grade when I was told I would have to go back to where I came from because of Executive Order 13769, better known as the Muslim Travel Ban. You're, even now as a senior when I walked into a classroom a month ago someone murmured under their breath without hesitation terrorist growing up in a post 9-11 world I've been made to feel that I should have to apologize and take responsibility for the actions of a few men who claim my faith to destroy the lives of others this moment years before I was born has profoundly and immensely changed my life. Being Muslim American, I have been made to feel that I should take responsibility for a heinous act that has nothing to do with the true message of my religion and community. Years of experience in public school has left me with many instances of hate, but this was the most humiliating and traumatic of them. I knew instinctively in my heart that I knew instinctively in my heart that this was wrong, making me want to take action to stop the cycle of humiliation for the next generation of Muslim students at Cerritos High School. But I was apprehensive, as I wasn't sure whether or not my voice or message was going to reach the six others who were hurt. Did they want to put themselves in a position of vulnerability? Did this event make people ashamed of their Muslim identity? Would I be blamed for being too sensitive and that this wasn't a big deal? Because casual and even blatant racism is frequently put into the category of not a big deal. But that changed when I heard one quote from Nelson Mandela where he once said, I learned that courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. So setting aside my fear of rejection and failure, I set forth a message to my peers, established a club charter, and the rest was history. The Cerritos High Muslim Student Union was born. If I couldn't change the opinion of prejudiced individuals in the world, I could at least start with those around me. To me, that's showing that we weren't going to hide, but rather be distinguishable participants in our greater community. In essence, it was more important that I nurtured the genuine, deep, and peaceful relationships I had with my small community of seven. Our shared trauma, identity, and faith brought us together like a family. So if I saw a brother in a class, I knew that we had each other's back. Or if I saw a sister in the quad, we had a shared mutual respect for one another. The impact of just a drop of courage to say that we are here is highly apparent with now 30 current members of the MSU. We have events, activities, and even a podcast that helped create a message and send a message that we're proud of who we are. But now I want to ask, how many of us have witnessed an act of injustice, whether it be casual racism from a classmate, workmate, or even a teacher's insensitivities, we hear or see something rooted in a discriminatory belief, yet we take the path of least resistance?
We assume that someone else, somewhere down the line, is going to pick up the slack and address issues of intolerance and indifference instead of us using our own tongue. This is even explained with the bystander effect, which is the idea that we're 30% less likely to help a distressed person in public when we're under the influence of a public situation or when there are more bystanders present. It's in our nature not to want to rock the boat, yet we clearly do. Prejudice is learned. Prejudice is dangerous and prevalent. But like all evil, prejudice is powerless because real power lies within our collective and intrinsic inclination towards righteousness. When we don't have the courage to stand up against injustice, it only gives it only gives the offender even more courage to maintain the status quo. We choose silence for many reasons, including people-pleasing, apathy, and paralysis. People-pleasing may look like not having, being complicit by making that uncomfortable laugh because you don't want to be quote-unquote that person. Apathy may be not having the will to say or do anything because you simply don't care or you somehow think that bias is justified. And paralysis may be feeling frozen in time, thinking to yourself, did that really just happen? And in that period of time, you think you've lost the opportunity to say or do the right thing. But I want you to know it's never too late because it takes courage to completely cancel out complicity. For someone like me, who gets a lump in their throat and butterflies in their stomach in the face of turmoil, courage has meant breaking the silence and doing damage control with others. However, it's also meant questioning why something is called a joke and providing the necessary educational resources in order to combat issues of intolerance and ignorance. You have power if you have a hand. You have power if you have a tongue, and you have power if you have a heart. So don't allow fear to stop you from doing the right thing, even if it may seem like a marginal act. The moment where my community faced injustice was not just one moment, but an outcome of years of Islamophobic rhetoric. But with just a drop of courage, it has created tremendous progress which begs the question on what could happen if we all had the courage to do the right thing, whether it be in the form of a community building exercise or just a simple, meaningful conversation. The answer is radical social advancement. So today, I leave you with a verse from the Quran, chapter 4, verse 135. Stand up firmly for justice as a witness to God against yourselves, your family, or your kin, and against and against rich or poor. Thank you.